Hello again, everyone, and learn back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be talking about the natal chart of the professor, uh, aka Grayson Boucher. I don't know if I'm saying his last name correctly, but some of you may have heard of him. He's, let's say, fairly renowned, iconic um, street baller. Uh, and he's an actor as well. He's been in a few movies. Uh, he's also a He's somebody, I mean, when you're, you're talking, I mean, he's just not the typical street baller. He's really the prototypical street baller. He puts, I mean, his son is in Gemini, Moon in Scorpio. He's very, uh, puts a lot of shrewd moves on people, to say uh, the least, on the court. And he's even outmaneuvered at least one NBA player on occasion and did make a basket again against him as somebody that was much taller than him so he's certainly not afraid of the stature or size of whoever he goes up against now of course i i couldn't find a time of birth for him so i had improvised once again and do a solar slash sunrise chart in which i put the sun at the same point as the ascendant now the professor um, I'm not exactly 100% sure why he's referred to as the professor, but it could be that he, part of it might be attributed to the fact that he takes people uh, to school uh, and, uh, so to speak, when he's on the basketball court. And he's also made, I believe, some videos and instructional tutorials and how to, and, and as far as dribbling, and I'm sure he incorporates as far as moves, putting on uh, players and so forth, and uh, uh, your opposition, whatever it is, you could always you know, Google that or search it, uh, go find his website or whatever Facebook page and inquire more about it. But the thing is, uh, he's only 5'10", like 155 pounds, and he plays like he's you know well over six foot. But uh, anyway. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about, okay, he was born, it was uh, June 10th, uh, 1984, and it puts his sun in Gemini, of course, and the moon in Scorpio. Now, with the sun in Gemini and moon in Scorpio, you're talking about the sun in astrology could be about our, our focus and how we shine. And Gemini, of course, is outsmarting, outmaneuvering, outthinking others and the fact that it's going into the you're talking about the moon and scorpio being blended with this the sun and gemini being injected into that moon and scorpio energy perhaps this is done this manifests into bringing that gemini energy into one-on-one -on -one competitions doing so with a lot of passion and also uh, with an indomitable spirit perhaps and also where when he plays he's obviously doing so where he's gaining power over the opponents and sometimes he, he just flat out uh, dominates them and that could be a little bit of that Scorpio energy uh, uh, coming into play and also with a lot of emotional intensity I would say as well given that we're talking about the moon and Scorpio now Based on the solar sunrise chart, um, he has uh, a balance, a good equilibrium of planets on the top and bottom half of the chart. Now, this could give a good balance between uh, optimism. Well, you want to say optimism, pessimism, not really. You want to say pessimism shouldn't really be a, a part of a balance. But it, does, but he can, it tells me he could vacillate between optimism and pessimism and, and also introversion and extroversion. And also, as far as being... Uh, subjective and objective it tells me that he has a uh, ability to be, be I mean he has a part of his life where he's very uh, gregarious and extrovert and needs people and about at the same time he does have that you know an even need for uh, for his privacy and being by being by himself and to himself at times now so there's a good balance between the gregariousness the extroversion and the introversion and being introspective now he also had, uh, based on the solar sunrise chart, he has a preponderance of planets on the right side of the chart. And what that tells me is that he's really, uh, it shows a lot of his energy is collaborating with others on projects. Sometimes he may need to maybe be cajoled by others in order to get things done. It tells me he likes to often do things uh, really more uh, with others as opposed to doing things by himself he might like to do more projects that are more about collaborating uh, with people and more people oriented in terms of whatever work he might be doing and uh, in efforts that he has that he has to do whatever activities he may be uh, involved in so 
and as far as and maybe being a little bit more uh, as far as dependent in in contrast to independent self-reliant it doesn't mean that he has no ability to do things uh, on uh, as far as being self-reliant and uh, you know in, in being independent I'm sure he's generated a lot of his income but a lot of it has to do obviously with his ability this affinity he has for street balling and the fact that he is uh, such a obviously prodigious talent and in, in what he does but anyway now he also has uh, Grayson Voucher has the majority of his major astrological influences in mutable signs and when I'm talking about major astrological influences, of course I'm referring to the ten astrological planets the ascendant and the midheaven now with the solar sunrise chart of course the ascendant is positioned at the same place as the Sun so I mean you're gonna have the ascendant and the Sun being the same automatically but that being said this um, what, what this tells me is having ma many of those influences in immutable signs is that he has a lot of uh, adaptability and he has a very strong ability to make the compromises in relationships and make the adjustments and show pliability in situations not uh, and the thing about on the, on the negative side though sometimes it can give a lot of vacillation and indecision and changeability as well in certain worrisome energy so those are on the negatives that's what he has to he'll look at in terms of being careful of now another thing though uh, he has uh, the, mo the m most of his major astrological influences are in air signs I mean I could tell just by how he plays that he's very cerebral a lot of having a lot of energy and air can make, give a person a lot of intellectual ability, a lot of cerebral energy, communication skills, somebody that can articulate things well, solve problems very readily, and probably he could be very, I'm sure he could be scientific uh, as well and have certain scientific prowess and uh, and ability having a lot of that energy uh, and air on the negative side though when you have a lot of um, you know, just being fair about this uh, having a lot of astrological energy and air there might be some lack of some pragmatism and practicality he does have like two planets and earth so it might help a little he may have an earth ascendant depending on his time of birth I'm kind of thinking he may have a Taurus rising uh, ascendant so I had somebody you know the other day you know had looked at his uh, look at some of his photos uh, online and he does seem to have it could be a, a Taurus you know type appearance with the roundish face the full kind of full face and full features and just to and look like and, and as far as even though he's slender and build he's kind of got a little stocky frame so it might be Taurus rising but that's just speculation on my part but anyway Another thing is that uh, when I looked at his uh, final signature and the final or chart signature, and of course that's based on what you have uh, the majority of in terms of the quality, like you know, as far as in his case goes, as mo most of the major astrological influences are immutable signs, and also you're talking about the what he has most in what certain element, and he had the major uh, majority of his major astrological influences and air signs so it equates and comes to a final signature or chart signature which is Gemini now in, in astrology the final or chart signature that that can give supposed to give an overall tone or feel to the chart but I at least for me I don't think it supersedes the Sun moon or ascendant in terms of its significance or the as far as the energy it may exert on the chart but given that it's in the same sign as his sun sign Gemini I see this as accentuating a lot of the uh, the Gemini energy already present in his chart he already has I mean he has the Sun Venus and Mercury all in Gemini and the thing about it is this could actually again it could, it could accentuate that Gemini energy so it gives a very strong um, as far as Gemini characteristics can be very pronounced and prominent such as being very versatile diversified loquacious ability uh, uh, you know, versatility dexterity um, 
quick wittedness, good mental ability, loquaciousness, but also on the negative side, it can give, at times, it may give some strong vacillation and very mercurial energy. Now, another thing that I noticed, uh, okay, what I want to talk about as far as uh, pictorial look again, uh, he had the majority of the planets based on the solar sunrise chart in the second quadrant, and, this, and the qua second quadrant in, in astrology consists of the fourth, fifth, and sixth house. Hold on a moment, people. Sorry about that, I'm back, but anyway. And what it tells me is your look at the fourth house is uh, about the home. Fifth can be about sports, fun, amusement, and enjoyment. And the sixth house of, of work. So it tells me he's probably very strongly at home with sports, fun, amusement, and enjoyment, and in his work life as well. And that is a very strong point of emphasis in his chart. And he didn't. He only had one planet in uh, you call it the, the first quadrant of the chart and that was the Sun in Gemini and that was because when you do the solar sunrise chart of course you plot the Sun at the same precise point as the ascendant and automatically puts the Sun in the first house what it tells me is when there's a lack of uh, planets in the first house he's really somebody that's really you, you can't couldn't really accuse him of being overly self-centered or egocentric or overly engrossed in his own activities it shows me coupled with the fact he had the perpetual preponderance of planets on the right side of the chart that he's more about others as opposed to himself yes see I'm sure he he's very affluent and prosperous and probably made a ton of money his net worth probably I, if I guess I'm sure is at least a million dollars, but that doesn't mean he doesn't have the ability to show altruism and, and help others. And it, and it strike he strikes me as somebody that really, um, really is about helping others and in contrast to thinking about himself and being as far as being self-protective and, and uh, worrying about his own interests. So anyway. Now another thing I noticed was interesting, it's not much of a shocker though or startling, is that he has now Uranus and Sagittarius in his sixth house in the solar sunrise chart is a singleton. And when you're talking about a singleton, you're talking about the only uh, the only planet that falls in a certain quality or element. Now he has uh, Uranus and Sagittarius is the only planet he has in a fire sign in the sixth house. And he obviously, I mean, it, well, when you have a singleton planet, there could be more emphasis on it and it could stand out a little more. It could be more prominent in terms of the influence it exerts in the person's natal chart. The fact that it's, uh, you're about Uranus and Sagittarius, that by itself may give some ingenuity in something sports related. The fact that it's in the sixth house, it falls in the sixth house of work, and it also makes you somebody some people might say a loose conjunction to the seventh house cusp of competition so it's not surprising he's able to put on a lot a lot of these ingenious or these original moves that he does on on the court in seeking to it in his work life in his daily routine and it's more accentuated because it's a singleton i saw him have to do some move one time i mean you're talking about something that's really you know something innovative in terms of a move on a basketball court he did something with his hand and it looked like he had it like in reverse position he, he bounced the ball on the court and it, and the ball comes up and it goes into the rim so I mean this guy is just unbelievable he's just a phenom and I mean it's like when, when you see people like this it's just a one-of-a-kind uh, person basically and talent and the thing about it too is what, another thing I want to talk about as far as his chart goes. He also has a grand air trine configuration as chart, or at least a loose one with the, the Pluto. Uh, Pluto may be a little bit uh, in his terms of I don't. I, Pluto might be you know as far as uh, as far as making the trine to the sun may be loose. Uh, trying to it, but anyway, at least a loose one nonetheless, and it consists of his sun in Gemini. Uh, Aquarius MC, of course, in the solar sunrise chart, Aquarius is at the MC, and then the Pluto in Libra in the fifth house of sports, and that could be manifest in power in sports and being in Libra relationships. So what it does is when you have a grand air trine in uh, astrology, 
Uh, it could often give very natural, feminine, natural ability, being proficient at things, and not really necessarily um, putting uh, overabundance of effort into it. These could be natural talents and abilities that are emphasized, but the per what the person has to be careful of is by as far as complacency and becoming too relaxed because if you let if you become too relaxed and you don't utilize the energy and you don't put it to good use then you don't obviously you don't have uh, productive uh, results uh, from it but you're talking about the Sun being in quick-witted Gemini and very shrewd thinking and you're talking also about Aquarius MC, the reputation for being the maverick, the innovator. This is where a lot of his ingenuity, I think, comes in, in terms of what he does. You could, you could say his career. And then the Pluto in Libra, again, that could, man, he has it at 29 degrees as well. The full, what I see is the full culmination of the planet. And this could indicate a lot of power, being in the fifth house, a lot of power in sports, being relationships, uh, Libra uh, being about relationships and also doing things with others when he's playing like two on two, collaborating with others on a, in a team situation. Anyway, the one last thing I want to talk about his chart was interesting is that he has, based on the solar sunrise time, anyway, he has the stellium in Scorpio in the sixth house of work employment, and that consists of the moon, Saturn, and Mars being in Scorpio. And when you look at, and based on the solar sunrise time, that is the order it falls in, in terms of degrees. The moon comes first, followed by Saturn, and then Mars. And when you look at the stellium in astrology, it's broken down very systematically. You start out with the moon, and being the, given that the moon, that could be about the public, and then followed by Saturn is the, could be the career, your work, and then also Mars can be about sports and competition and drive. And what it does is it starts out having you know being in the public, the moon, and then some kind of having a having a career connected with that and, and doing something sports related, sports competition. The fact that um, and and this is obviously the public and, and his career is what likely drives him because of the way this uh, stellium is broken down. Now the fact it's in Scorpio, this might be done with a lot of guile, a lot of emotional intensity, passion, uh, resourcefulness, and a lot of relentless energy and resilience. So the moon in Scorpio, and if he does have uh, by any by some chance if his ascendant is, is Taurus, he obviously has a lot more fixity and purpose than the typical Sun in Gemini and would be a lot less uh, mercurial and changeable um, uh, compared to the typical Sun in Gemini uh, individual. And that's really what I basically wanted to say. I mean, he, I mean, this guy. I mean, if you ever watch his videos, you could see he's just a natural. And uh, he he put on one move. I thought. You know, it was phenomenal. You talk about being cunning and shrewd. He threw the, uh, it was one movie played against somebody that was a, looked like a lot taller than him. The guy might have been 6'3", the opponent. He throws the ball off the backboard. And the guy, of course, in the defenders got his back to the basket. And after, when the ball caromed off the backboard, it hit the guy. It looked like it deflected off the defender's hand. And what Grayson did was he got the ball and he went up and, and made the, um, made the basket. I <laughs> you talk about Gemini ability to outmaneuver and outsmart the adversary or opposition. That epitomized that energy right there. But anyway, people, that will conclude this YouTube Astrological segment. Until next time, people, Edwin Lerner saying stay well.